Yeah. Welcome back to the homestead, everybody. We are preparing to plant our seeds in the middle of winter. Like it. Look at that. testing out the greenhouse and how well it works to uh, plant some seeds in our raised bed that we have out there and uh, see if we can grow some crops here in the middle of winter. Who wants to plant a chicken plant? Me! Me! Who wants to plant a, a bacon plant? Me! Who wants to plant a blueberry muffin plant? Me! So my wife planted these plants. 22320 last year. Oh, yeah. And uh, they Eat germinated. That. Most of what we're going to be planting today is going to be be able to be harvested within 30 days. Uh, 30 to 45. Yeah. So um, it'll be a it'll be a quick turnover bed. One of the main reasons is because we just need to see if this thing's going to work. And um, the other reason is we want all of the crops that we put in the same raised bed to come to harvest around the same time, not exact, but you know. We got our seeds ready to go. We're gonna plant cilantro. Here, you gonna hold it? We're gonna plant beets, Detroit dark red beets, cherry bell radishes, ruby red Swiss chard, neon lights mix Swiss chard, astro arugula, Vates blue kick. Uh, Vates Blue Curl Kale, Butter Crunch Lettuce. This is just a lettuce blend from our community gardens down there. Salad Bowl Lettuce, Mokum Carrots, and Ideal Purple Top Melon Turnips. So that's what we're gonna put in the ground or put in the raised bed out there. All right, let's, let's get our stuff together. Get our gloves, our working gloves on. And you wanna plant those? Easter egg radishes. We'll get our working gloves on and we will start scooping. We gotta scoop some soil to add to the raised bed because our, our soil kind of dropped down, our soil level dropped down over the uh, summer. Probably everything just settling down to the bottom. We have to rake back our uh, wood chips. We already put our chicken poop fertilizer on there. And the last thing we'll have to do after that is, well, I watered the bed down uh, two days ago. And then the last thing we'll have to do is Put the poppy seeds in the ground. Are you gonna go in that box? Oh, yeah. You okay? Oh! <laughs> Last thing we'll do is pop these seeds in the ground. Turn on the fire. Get the wood stove roaring. All right. All right. So let's go outside and start this day. Got our fire going. Actually, that wood stove has been going since the last video that I made. If you haven't seen that video of us installing the uh, wood stove in the greenhouse, I'll leave a link in the description below. Y'all can go check it out. So we actually left the last video not having done the fencing for the pigs and the chickens. Obviously now you can see that that's all done. So what we did was we divided the middle part up into the pig area and then the back part is the chicken area. And so it's been working out good. It's been about a week since we did this and uh, everything's doing, everything's going good. Um, you know, the pigs are super happy. Hi right, Fernie. What's up girl? What's up girl? The piglets are doing good. We got their water over here. I moved their watering trough and I just dump into that one every once in a while so the piglets can get some water. They need some more. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Ow, don't bite me. Daddy, look. Piggies are all. So, anyway, everything's working out with the new setup in the greenhouse. The pigs love it, the chickens love it. It's a great setup, great scenario. Everything's staying nice and clean and orderly in here, which is helpful. I did put down a bunch of alfalfa for the pigs, so they got that as bedding right now. 
I am gonna come back in probably the next couple days here and build like a, um, a holding bay for the, uh, for the rest of the alfalfa that we have over here so they can eat and not spread the alfalfa everywhere. Let's not throw it, buddy, okay? So our piglets, we're treating for mites and stuff, and so instead of using, we use this stuff called ivermectin. When it's bad, they need to ingest ivermectin, and sometimes we do that. Uh, before we do that, we really hate to use ivermectin, but before we do that, we're gonna treat them with diatomaceous earth, and um, we have some pink eye spray that we use. Mikhail, I need you to rub it in. Just pat it in real gentle. Don't let them jump out. Cool. Just pat it in. Okay, y'all gotta stop. All right. Got it. Just rub it in. Mikhail, don't breathe all that in. Space. Don't breathe that in. Here, y'all go over there. Nice. Dirt, dirt, dirt. <laughs> <laughs> I keep on trying to climb out. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. That's all right, we got the pigs done. Uh, we're moving on to the raised bed. Uh, the first thing we're doing is we're raking all this mulch back. We're getting all the big mulch chunks out, and then we're gonna put the soil on, and then we're gonna put the wood chips back on. So, let's go. Look at that bed, hey. Looks good, babe. Thanks. Y'all got the bed all done, Story? I like it. Look at that. We got it. some nice top soil from the, um, or not top soil. Some, some decomposition from that mulch we put on there. It's got a nice little layer on top. And then we got all the uh, compost, or sorry, all the fertilizer from the chicken poop on there. Nice and raked. So I think we're ready to plant, huh? Are we ready to plant? Yeah. Ready to plant some plants. I like getting that. Daddy watered it tons. Well, hey. I guess sorry. Thank you. What? So the, the water is kind of floating on top of the soil, so that tells me that we need to aerate the soil a little bit. It's just not retaining any moisture. Anyway, we have our uh, thing that we aerate with over here and I'm gonna go through and just aerate the whole bed real quick and then we'll water it because it's not it's just not retaining moisture so all right so all we're doing is with the uh, fork here is we're just cracking the soil Make sure we're not it. lifting it too high up because we don't want to do that. We just want to get some air down in there. Yeah. Watch same your fingers, thing. Michaela. Same concept as when uh, the grass people come and use that machine to poke little holes in your lawn. Now we got a sitting table. Look at this. You wanna sit with mom and dad? And um, obviously it'll be much better in the summer when there's plants in here instead of pigs, stinky pigs and chickens. Uh, but it's still stinky. nice. They're really not that stinky. They're not that stinky. They've got a carbonaceous diaper. They're not stinky yeah, at all. Yeah, exactly. So, we're gonna use this as our chill area. And this is coming along right next to the wood stove. So you can have your morning coffee in here. Um, whatever it is. All right, so uh, we had an extended lunch break. Uh, my wife actually started planting some over here. Babe, what's in here? Uh, we got a gourmet lettuce blend from the community garden. So we got a lettuce blend. We got salad bowl lettuce. Salad blend. bowl lettuce. Um, then we have my favorite cilantro. Actually, no. Cilantro? Um, then arugula. Arugula. Citrus of lettuce, a row of arugula, cilantro, and ruby red Swiss chard. Let's go ahead and finish planting this bed. Do you just lay them on? I'm mm -hmm. about to push them in a half inch, so it's about six inches.
Okay, so we got the bed almost all the way planted. Um, I actually built these little wire rings, uh, I don't know, probably two years ago now. And they are just a whole plastic over the top. So all we did was stick them in the edges. So one on each edge here. And they just span the top so that when we come back, we're gonna have staple um, plastic stapled to this side. And it'll lay over top of those wires and then we'll have um, plastic on this side that'll just be on like a pole or something so that we can move it off when we need to get to the plants and then bring it back over when we need to. Anyway, so what we're doing here is we have the, obviously the overall greenhouse above us. And then we're basically creating another greenhouse here with the raised bed. And that's gonna ensure that the bed stays nice and warm and um, the plants have the ability to kind of sprout and grow. So. Um, really, at the end of the day, since these are all cold crops, we planted all cold crops, I don't even think we need the heater uh, because we have the greenhouse and then another greenhouse. Um, so that should be sufficient, but who knows? We'll see. We'll see how this, uh, how the adventure goes. Obviously, we'll keep you posted along the way. Um, he's taking a pee. So we'll finish planting the bed here and, uh, and then we'll get started on our plastic layer. Just a board in there. If the board was a bit longer, it'd be even better, but you know, this works for now. And then we'll, we'll probably clamp these sides down. Clamp over there, clamp over here. All right, there it is. The bed is fully planted. How many different things do we have in there? So 11 different varieties of veggies in here. And obviously they're all cold crops, quick to, quick to maturity. And uh, we got this double hoop action going so our greenhouse above and greenhouse above them again and obviously our wood stove um so we'll see how this does we're gonna we're gonna get a thermometer like a wi-fi thermometer and put it in there so that we can see from the house how cold it's getting in here it'll be able to track it so we can tell in the middle of the night on the cold nights how cold, how cold is it getting in there but man i think this is gonna work what do you think i'm excited yeah this is the first time we've ever tried to grow in the middle of the winter. Yeah. And we're utilizing the greenhouse that we spent so much time and effort into, uh, which that's cool, the double barrel wood stove. You know what I um, really wanna do? What? I wanna get our start shelf out here and start some flowers. Yeah. The flowers for the, the last year, or this past growing season was the first time we grew flowers. Yeah. And our flowers did better than all of our vegetables. Yeah, flowers are great to grow. And they add so much beauty to the property in the garden, so. That's right. I think I want to start some flower starts in here. It's awesome. So this is our area. Obviously you can see with the table and the chairs here um, next to the wood stove. This is going to be a cool little area in here. Um, anyway, we're excited about the raised bed, how this thing's going to turn in, in out in the end. Obviously we will uh, we'll take you along for the journey. We'll show you the, this thing growing as we go along and how it's going to work out. So exciting as this is our first time growing through the winter. So <laughs> what I've been doing for the wood stove to keep this place nice and warm is right before bedtime, I come out here and I get some big chunks of wood. I don't take from this wood over here. This is kind of our nice split wood that goes in our wood stove in the house. But I take from 
this really junky pile of wood over here. Now that's all wet and it stays wet and actually it's green and so it burns slow. But I'll tell you what, it burns. Once I get this wood stove going, no matter what I put in there, it could be wet as a wet as a dog. And if I put it in there, man, it will burn. So I haven't had to restart this fire for a week. I've just kept it going. What I do is come out, fill this thing to the max in the in the evening before I go to bed. And then it burns all night. And then when I come out here in the morning, it's all burned down and all that's left is coals. I take two or three of these logs back here that are dry, nice and dry and split, put them on there and then I load it back up with wet wood that's out there, wet green wood. So it's been kind of a nice little uh, process that's not burdensome. I mean, to me, it hadn't been burdensome at all. And probably what I'll end up doing is I have a huge, yeah, I cut tons of wood in the uh, fall. And our neighbor gave us some too. Our neighbor gave us a whole oak tree. So anyway, I have a whole huge pile of wood back here that I can dig into. I was going to burn it all at once just to get rid of it, but now I'm going to hold on to it to get this, keep this wood stove going. Uh, so that'll be real nice. So the last thing we do, but we're almost done for the day. But um, last thing we'll do is fold up this plastic. At some point, I got to get this gate on here. Because for those of you who don't know, we are right smack dab in the middle of our adoption. We just we we were were just here recently, fully funded for our adoption. That, so that's a miracle of God. And uh, so we'll be potentially taken off here in the next couple of weeks to wherever we have to go. In the next couple of days, we could get a phone call. Tomorrow. Yeah, we could get a phone call tomorrow. Uh, we presented our uh, profile to a birth mom, so we could be out of here tomorrow, having to go to Florida and potentially having to stay there for up to two weeks. Um, so. This anyway. was risky what we did because we won't be able to be here yeah, to keep exactly. the stuff going and water the plants. Adam's parents are here, but yeah. I don't know if they'll be able to keep up with all the shenanigans we have going on around the farm. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, uh, hopefully this is an easy process and hopefully they just take off and grow. Like I said, I don't think we even really need the wood stove to make these plants grow. I don't, they're all cold hardy. So yeah, they're cold hardy crops and we got them double layered here. I mean, I think they're going to be fine. So anyway, as a side note, just exciting news from us. We are um, potentially going to pick up our child here soon. So that's super exciting. We are pumped about that. We're also pumped that we got fully funded for our adoption. That's another testimony of God. He is so faithful to us and he has done his part. He is a father to the fatherless and he's made that known to us. Complete funding, I mean $40,000, $40,000 we got funded for this adoption. Earlier this week, we found out we had to raise an additional yeah. $15,000 and we had three days to do it. And we we're like, only God can do this. Lord, if this is you, you're gonna make a way. And literally the deadline was yesterday and we had raised it all. Yeah. So in 72 hours, the Lord brought in $15,000, which and is about, unreal. I'd say two thirds of that came from complete strangers. Yeah. So complete strangers, story. wild story. So an influencer, put out a message and said, hey, wouldn't it be really cool if this family that I don't even really know got fully funded for their adoption by total strangers from the internet? And uh, so that's what happened. Yeah. Fives, tens, twenties, two hundreds, five hundreds, thousands. I mean, it was wild, so. I love you. Hi there. Hi there. What's this? Say hi there. Woo. Uh, so, woo. Uh, looks like a cat. So anyways, guys, we're super excited about that. So we might be having to take off here soon. We will keep you posted. We'll keep you posted on the raised bed and the progress going on inside of here. Thank you guys so much for watching and tracking with our journey. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and uh, check us out. Stay connected with us. We got a lot of cool stuff in the future that we're headed towards uh, with the adoption journey and everything going on here on the homestead. We're super excited and we are grateful for you guys grateful for your encouragement for your participation and what we're doing and this i just dumped out a cup of coffee i really hope that wasn't no that here. was old okay it looked like no. it was five days old that is a great sin i hate when someone dumps out my cold coffee that's been sitting for hours and hours you ready for dinner anyways we will see y'all in the next video thank you so much for watching